Hello and welcome to our third lesson in this series. In this lesson we'll be looking at whether there is a sanctuary in heaven and whether it is a real and a literal place. We have established so far that God has a literal and physical form. That he sits on a literal and physical throne which is placed in the temple in heaven. We also establish that heaven is a real and a literal place with real and literal beings in it. The question that we now need to ask ourselves is this. Is there a real, a literal sanctuary or temple in heaven? Many have rejected this idea and classified it as unscriptural or unbiblical. Is this so? What does the Bible have to say about the sanctuary in heaven? Let us begin by first addressing the question, is there a sanctuary in heaven? Does the Bible reveal any information about this topic for us? You see, the answer for this question should be a resounding yes. The Bible tells us that there is a sanctuary in heaven which the Lord pitched and not man. Notice this verse in Hebrews chapter 8 verses 1 and 2. We read, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. You can also see Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11 and 12. You see, this verse we read is very clear. It also tells us that Jesus is the minister of the sanctuary or of the tabernacle which God pitched and not man. Obviously, it is referring to the sanctuary in heaven. To the honest student, this should be enough evidence to prove the existence of a sanctuary in heaven. But the Bible gives us much more evidence. The Bible also tells us that God is in His holy temple, which is in heaven. Notice in Psalms chapter 11 and verse 4. The Bible says, The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, His eyelids try the children of men. You can also see Psalms chapter 102 verse 19 and Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 20. This holy temple is called thy holy habitation from heaven. In Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 15, notice the verse. It says, look down from thy holy habitation from heaven. As you can see, the Bible tells us that God is in his holy temple, which is in heaven. The temple is God's holy habitation. The Bible also reveals to us that the prophet Isaiah in a vision saw the glory of God filling the temple. We see in Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Here we read that Isaiah saw God sitting upon his throne and his glory filled the temple. This not only tells us that there is a temple in heaven, but it also tells us that God's throne is in the temple. The Apostle John also saw a temple in heaven. In Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19 we read, And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. It is important to note that John saw a temple in heaven. Hence, heaven is not the temple itself, as we saw in an earlier lesson. There is an actual temple in heaven. We also read in Revelation chapter 15, And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. This was taken from Revelation chapter 15, verse 5 and 8. 
Again, John saw the temple in heaven. And just like Isaiah, he saw the glory of the Lord filling the temple, implying that God was dwelling in the temple. So in the book of Revelation, we read that God dwells in the temple and the temple is located in heaven. Heaven itself is not the temple, just like the temple is not God. God is in the temple and the temple is in heaven. Jesus is our high priest in this heavenly sanctuary as the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 and 8 verse 2. Notice what the Bible says. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. And in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 2 we read that Jesus is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. Every Christian admits that Jesus went to heaven with a physical body. We saw in the earlier lesson how Jesus had flesh and bone and how he ate after the resurrection. He ascended to heaven with this same resurrected body. Now if Jesus has a literal and physical body, and we are told that he is the minister of the sanctuary in heaven. It only makes sense to believe that there is a real and physical sanctuary in heaven in which Jesus, in his physical body, is ministering for us. Another point is that the earthly sanctuary was a type of the original heavenly sanctuary which was shown to Moses at Mount Sinai. God told Moses to build the earthly tabernacle according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle that was taken from Exodus chapter 25 verse 8 and 9. God told Moses to build it after the pattern or figure or likeness of that which God was going to show him. In other words, God showed Moses something and told him to build something like it. God was specific about what he wanted of Moses. In the same discourse, God told Moses a second time that he wanted him to build it according to the fashion thereof which was showed thee on the mount. Exodus 26 verse 30. The Jews understood that. Stephen, in his address to the Jews before he was stoned, rehearsed the fact how God told Moses that he should make the tabernacle according to the fashion that he had seen. In Acts chapter 7 verse 44 and in the letter written to the Jewish converts the author says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5 that the earthly tabernacle and its services were a shadow of heavenly things and if that is not clear enough the author of the book of Hebrews says that the earthly sanctuary was a figure of the true that's taken from Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24 in other words the existence of the earthly sanctuary was an unavoidable evidence of the existence of the heavenly sanctuary or of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. So, so far we have established that God has a real physical form. He sits on a real physical throne which is located in the temple which is found, this temple is found in a real literal heaven. If God has a real physical form and sits on a real physical throne and they are located in a real literal heaven, why should we deny the reality of the heavenly temple? Logic, reason and scripture leads us to conclude that the temple or the heavenly sanctuary is a real and a literal place. It is worth noting here that by literal, real and physical temple I do not mean that it is made of bricks or wood or all what we associate with every day. I simply believe that it is a real physical place that we will see one day and that it is not an imaginary or unreal or intangible place. It is a real physical place that one day we will see with our own eyes and we will walk upon with our feet.
Now, having established the reality of the heavenly sanctuary, we need to ask ourselves another question. Is the heavenly sanctuary made of two apartments as the earthly was? If you remember, the earthly sanctuary was made of two apartments. First, you had the holy place, and then after that, you had the most holy place. We established from the Bible very clearly that the earthly sanctuary was made after the pattern which the Lord showed to Moses. If the replica, the copy, or the figure contained two apartments, it is only logical to believe that the original contains two apartments as well. You see, in the book of Hebrews, Paul uses the Greek word hagion, a plural word it is, which has been translated in the King James as following. It has been translated as sanctuary in chapter 8 verse 2, in chapter 9 verse 2, and chapter 13 verse 11. It has been translated as holiest of all in chapter 9 verse 8, as holy place in chapter 9 verse 12 and 25, as holy places in chapter 9 verse 24, and as holiest in chapter 10 verse 19. Thus the one Greek word is translated five different ways in the eight texts. But regardless of the English translation, it is, still, it is still the same word and it still refers to both apartments. That is why the word is a plural word. It can never refer to only one apartment alone, whether it is the first or the second. The correct translation of the word should always be holies or holy places. It also can be translated as the sanctuary as long as it is understood to include both apartments and not only one. With this in mind, we can better understand what Paul meant when he said that Christ is a minister of the sanctuary or Hagion and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man. That's taken from Hebrews chapter 8 verse 2. Christ is the minister of both apartments, the holy and the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. We also read in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 24, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Or in other words, Paul was saying that Christ did not enter into the two apartments of the earthly tabernacle made with hands, but into the two apartments that are in heaven. This Greek word alone should be sufficient for us to believe that the heavenly sanctuary is made of two apartments. But this is not all what the Bible reveals to us. I believe that if we examine the furniture of the sanctuary, we will discover further evidence to support our case. The question now that we need to address, ask ourselves and address is, does the heavenly sanctuary contain the same furniture that was found in the earthly? Or to put it in a different way, does the furniture in the heavenly sanctuary match up with the furniture found in both apartments, the holy and the most holy of the earthly sanctuary? We are not looking if it's the same table of showbread taken to heaven. No, I don't believe that. But is there matching? Is there, for example, an equivalent to it up there? We're going to look at this table now where I will have the article placed there and then a verse under the earthly where it is found in the earthly tabernacle and in the heavenly tabernacle. For example, the seven golden candlesticks. The Bible tells us that they were found in the earthly in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 2 and Exodus 25 verse 37. We are also told in Revelation chapter 1 verse 12 that there is seven candlesticks in heaven. The seven lamps on the candlesticks in Exodus chapter 25 verse 37 and chapter 40 verse 25 it's in the earthly and then in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 5 it is found in the heavenly as well. The golden altar in Exodus chapter 30 1 to 6 found in the earthly and Revelation chapter 8 1 to 4 it is found in the heavenly. Ark of the Covenant 
Hebrews chapter 9 verse 3 and 5, Exodus 25 verse 10 to 22, it's found in the earthly, and Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19, it is found in the heavenly. The Bible tells us that John, when taken in vision to the heavenly sanctuary, saw the candlesticks and the golden altar. Both these items belong to the first apartment, the holy place. John also saw the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the second apartment or the most holy place. This confirms our belief in the two apartment sanctuary in heaven. In addition to this, John saw incense offered on the altar as was on the earthly, that's in Revelation chapter 8 verse 3 and 4, and Exodus chapter 30 verse 7 and 8 in the earthly, and incense burned in the censer as was in the earthly, Revelation chapter 8 verse 5, and in the earthly Leviticus chapter 16 verse 12 and 13. It must be noted in here that at times the query is raised whether the articles of furniture found in the heavenly sanctuary are literal or symbolical of greater things. Regardless whether you believe it is it to be literal or symbolical articles, it should not affect the reality of a two apartment sanctuary in heaven. The point we are making is that the scriptures reveal to us that in the heavenly sanctuary there are articles, whether symbolical or literal, it is up to you to study and decide, of which the earthly were a type and a shadow of, proving the existence of a two apartment sanctuary. Having established the fact that there is a sanctuary in heaven, in the coming lesson, we will compare the earthly sanctuary with the heavenly sanctuary to see whether the earthly one and its ministration truly was a shadow and an example of the heavenly. We will look at the three parts of the earthly sanctuary and their services. First, we will look at the courtyard, then we will look at the holy place and then we will look at the most holy place. From now on in this series we will examine, we will spend a lot of time examining the scripture to see what the Bible have to say about the ministry of Christ in the holy, in the most holy and what happened in the courtyard. But for now, please close your eyes as we close this session with a prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you Lord for your word and, uh, and the beautiful gems of truth that we learn from it. We ask the Lord that you'll uh, bless all those who are watching these presentations, that you will help us not only to the theoretically understand what the truth is, but to allow your spirit to take it and make it practical in our lives. Please Father, I pray for everyone who has been watching that they will continue to watch Continue to learn, continue to grow in your word and in knowing you. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.